Northeast service again. Two very divergent opinions about how to keep the track safe. One says we need more government spending. The other says privatization of rail traffic would be better for safety and the economy. So who's right? Our panel with their opinions on all this. We have Catherine Mangu Ward of Reason Magazine and Sabrina Schaefer, Independent Women's Forum, Executive Director and Forbes contributor. Catherine, two very different ideas of what to do with Amtrak. What's the best one? You know, I think we're in a little bit of a never waste a crisis moment now. Um, there yeah. are people who always want to see more funding for Amtrak. There are also um, some, some very specific uh, programs that people have been advocating for a long time, including um, kind of various kinds of technological solutions that would cost more money. Um, you know, frankly, I'm inclined not just to sort of favor privatization, but actually to just say, listen, there are private competitors to trains that are getting better and better, mm -hmm. like driverless cars. I mean, I think that it, it's sort of too narrow to say, you know, government or sell it. Um, you know, Luckily, hopefully, we won't have to rely on Amtrak for anything. But, soon. Sabrina, one thing we already know is how much the damn thing costs 45 right. billion taxpayer dollars since 1977, and it does not make money. Look at this $3.2 billion in revenue. That's how much it brings in, but the expenses are $4.2 billion, uh, leads to at least a $1 billion loss. Right. Every year, David, that's exactly right. I mean, look what happened last week was an absolute tragedy. And it's, it's sort of bothersome to see that it's already turned into more money, less money, you know, government, not government. Um, I think the reality is, though, as Catherine points out, that, look, since 1970, Amtrak has been a financial failure. As you mentioned, it's costing taxpayers a billion dollars every single year. And if you look at individual trains, you'll see that, you know, on the Northeast Regional, which is one that I travel very frequently and is the we train that, that unfortunately crashed. Exactly. Yeah. Um, look, that trains like that, maybe it's five dollars loss per passenger. But those larger cross-country trains, over four hundred, close to five hundred dollars right. per passenger loss every single time. These are just not efficient, and the tickets aren't cheap either. Not at all. All right, let's bring it back to the markets for a second here. Alibaba way down today, getting sued the same day by the owner of some big and often counterfeited brands, Gucci, Yves Saint Laurent. Despite Baba's claim that they are cutting down on sales of knockoffs, is this an impossible promise to keep in something that will keep the company out of the United States and European markets? Sabrina, what do you think? Well, I wonder if this is a function of a co company that has grown simply too I mean, if you look at, at an Amazon or an eBay, they've worked really hard to keep this counterfeit problem from overtaking the company. But, uh, you know, Jack Ma, one of the co-founders of Alibaba, says, look, the, the counterfeit problem is a, is a cancer that is facing this, co this company. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think that they've necessarily invested the kind of resources into developing algorithms and uh, different approaches to stopping this kind of counterfeit. But I wonder, um, the way Catherine, our American if there's have. any algorithm within China, a country that, that doesn't have the same kind of respect for, for private property that we do that would work here. You know, I think this is, uh, Sabrina is right, that this is uh, it may be a problem of insufficient investment by the company. But you know what a great way to incentivize a company to invest in solving this problem? Sue the pants off them, right? This is, I think it's a, it's a company that? to company uh, problem. Catherine, can not you do a that in problem. China? I don't, I don't think you could, right. you would have not have the same recourse to the courts in China that you would here. You know, I, I think the temptation is to kind of make it into a political problem. You know, I, in China, they, they don't have the same recourse to the courts, but there no. are still other ways to create incentives. All right. By the way, lawyers, U.S. lawyers who go over <laughs> there are terribly frustrated because they say the court system just doesn't work. It's purely political. But we've got to move on to a subject that really infuriated a lot of people, and it was an incredible aha moment. I got you a moment. Al Sharpton's 28-year-old daughter is suing New York City for $5 million after she alleged that she twisted her ankle crossing the street, an injury that she says causes her, quote, permanent physical pain. But that pain did not prevent her from bragging on Instagram about a mountain climbing adventure she had. So will she become the poster child for ending frivolous lawsuits? Here's the New York Post. All the tabloids had a field day with this. Uh, Catherine, what do you think? You know, I think we're lucky that the kind of people who file stupid slip and fall lawsuits are also pretty stupid in their social media behavior. So I, we have a kind of self-police. I mean, I, I think this is yet another example of why, uh, you know, why we should be 
uh, a looking at tort reform and b we should remember that these kind of settlements are uh, that and for, unfortunately police brutality settlements are a significant part of new york city's budget well and it's, um, it also and affects the private sector sabrine i mean it, to the tune of billions of yes. dollars we put together a list uh, the tort liability price tag for small businesses in the united states uh, was 105.4 billion dollars small businesses annually pay out about 35.6 billion of out of pocket uh, expenses to settle frivolous claims if you had the what they have in england and several other countries germany uh, the loser pays where if you lose a frivolous yeah, lawsuit yeah. you have to pay the whole court fees that might cut down on this no Absolutely. I mean, we are two times as, as costly, our, our, our legal system, as the U.K. The number I've been, you know, I've read is $264 billion that it costs us every year here in this country. And I think more states are going to do what Governor Perry has done in Texas in terms of loser pay um, uh, bills, which would at least try to eliminate, you can, you can get rid of a lot of these cases before they even get to the courts. Um, losers, you know, who are bringing these kinds of ridiculous lawsuits that are going to cost taxpayers ton, tons of money would have to be responsible for those fees. Um, so I think that there's more that we can do in terms right. of reforming the court system. By the way, Catherine, uh, I once twisted my ankle leaving the Plaza <laughs> Hotel and a New York City politician, I won't well, I'll mention her name, uh, she's passed now, uh, Geraldine Ferraro once ran for vice president. Nice woman, but I came in on crutches. She said, David, what happened? I told her, she said, you should sue the city. I said, Geraldine, you, you represent the people of New York. That's who I would be suing. She said, oh, that's okay. I'll handle your case. I mean, it's like nobody really pays. Well and it's also, I'm sorry, David, but it's also sort of this culture of narcissism that we live in, in which everyone feels entitled to. Right. Because the, the you know, New York City has failed to maintain its, its sidewalks or right. roads, do we really need to hold the, the hardworking you know, person at, our, at the restaurant down the street accountable for it? This yeah. just simply doesn't make Accountability. sense. Accountability. That is a, by the way, I did not sue. I've never sued anybody, just for the record. Catherine, thank you very much. Sabrina, great to see you. Don't forget, by the way, you can catch Sabrina and myself every weekend on Forbes on Fox, 11 a.m. Eastern Time on Fox News. Liz? Some